Okay. So we ended our, our last discussion of organic chemistry or biochemistry with the discussion of hydrocarbons and we looked at how those hydrocarbons got a more of a characteristic to them when we added functional groups to them. Now we're going to start to get into those important biological molecules to living things. So the first thing we see here is this topic of biological molecules or what we call macromolecules. And macro, you think of very large, so we're looking at very large molecules important to life. And there are four distinct groups of biologically important macromolecules. Those would be carbohydrates, which are sugars, fats, and lipids, proteins, and lastly, nucleic acids. These large macromolecules are what we would consider uh, polymers, and poly means many. So these polymers, or these larger molecules, are built from simple subunits that we call monomers. A good way to picture this, if you have a brick house, each little brick in that house would represent the monomer, and those monomers come together to form the larger structure, which would be the polymer itself, in this case, the brick house. So the, the house would be the polymer, and each individual brick of that house would be the monomer subunit. How do these macromolecules or polymers form? They form through a reaction called dehydration th synthesis. So a dehydration synthesis reaction is when you synthesize a polymer by joining monomers together. But in order for these monomers to join together, you need to remove a water molecule. The reverse of that is when you take these macromolecules or these polymers and start to break them up into their individual subunits. These individual subunits, the monomers, uh, can break up because you break the bonds between the monomers and you add water back into the, the uh, uh, molecules. So a hydrolysis reaction breaks polymers down, a dehydration synthesis reaction builds uh, polymers from monomer subunits. And we'll discuss that in class. So um, looking at the diagram here, you could see that you have individual monomers in the diagram. And when you dehydrate those monomers, so you're losing the hydroxyl group of one monomer and the hydrogen from this other second monomer here, you form a water molecule. So these mo monomers have been dehydrated, dehydration synthesis. So dehydration, they've lost water, they become dehydrated with water. Synthesis means you're building that, that polymer from those monomer subunits. The reverse of that is taking that polymer and you split water, hydrolysis. Hydro means water, lysis means to split. So hydrolysis is when you take that polymer then and you, with the splitting of water, you break the, the bonds between those monomer subunits within the polymer and you start to uh, break up that polymer into the individual components that it is composed of. We'll discuss this in class and we'll see this as we go throughout our groups of macromolecules. We'll look examples at uh, examples of this within each group. So our first group of molecules is carbohydrates. Basically, if you look, um, carbohydrates, they are used as an immediate source of energy and uh, larger polymer carbohydrates uh, make up structural components of certain uh, living things. Uh, basically, the, when we talk about carbohydrates, the carbon to hydrogen to oxygen ratio is a 1 to 2 to 1, which makes sense because carbon gives you the carbo portion of its name, carbohydrate, and then you have hydrate, which stands for water. So when you look at carbohydrates, you're looking at molecules that are composed of both carbon and water, or one to two to one ratio. So for every one carbon atom, you have a water molecule, where you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So the basic types of carbohydrates, you have the monosaccharides. These would be those monomer subunits that I was talking about coming together via dehydration synthesis reaction. And a monosaccharides contains a single sugar molecule and is the uh, first source of quick energy. So often you talk about when you're eating chocolates or, or uh, other starchy foods, you look at uh, a quick fix of energy. 
sugar. Well, there you have it. That would be monosaccharides. As monosaccharides come together, two monosaccharides join together, make a disaccharide, and those form via dehydration synthesis reaction. And then when you get more than two monomer subunits come together via dehydration synthesis, you form a polysaccharide. So these would be the polymers of the monosaccharide monomers. Examples of monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the simple sugars. You have uh, the basic types that you need to know for this class are the hexose monosaccharides. These are six carbon. A hexagon is a, a structure with six sides. So hexose sugars have uh, six carbon it's within their, within their uh, sugar molecule. And we have three basic types here. We have glucose, C6H1206. Glucose is blood sugar. Uh, we, it is the fuel of our cells. We have fructose, C6H1206, that is the sugar of fruits. And we have galactose, which is C6H1206 as well, a component of milk sugar. Glucose, fructose, and galactose all have the same molecular formula of C6H1206, but their arrangement of atoms are different. Therefore, we call this isomerism. So they are isomers of each other. And if you look, look at those molecular formulas, C6H1206. For every one carbon, you have that 12 hydrogens and you have 6 oxygens. So there you could see that 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Pentose sugars are 5 carbon sugars. Uh, we have two basic types of pentose sugars. We have ribose, which is the 5 carbon sugar found in the nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid, which is RNA. And you have the other pentose sugar, 5 carbon sugar, known as deoxyribose. And deoxyribose is found in the nucleic acid DNA, which is, his name is uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. Let me fix that there. Deoxyribonucleic acid is the um, uh, nucleic acid that has the 5 carbon sugar deoxyribose. So here we could see um, glucose, our blood sugar fuel of our cells. It does provide quick energy in animals. And here we could see its ring form. Often when, when you put sh uh, sugar molecules in water, they form uh, a ring in aqueous solutions rather than, rather than the straight chain form. Here we can see the formation and breakdown of maltose, which is a disaccharide. Here we have a glucose molecule plus a glucose molecule, C6H1206 plus C6H1206. Dehydration synthesis, you form maltose, which is uh, a disaccharide. Now we have C12H22O11. Remember that you lose two hydrogens and one oxygen to form that water molecule there at the end. So this is an example of a dehydration synthesis hydrolysis reaction if you go in reverse. We will do this in class, so don't bother writing this particular structure down in your notebook, but do leave room for it um, so you can write it down in class. So let's look at some disaccharide examples. Disaccharides. Two monosaccharides joined together via dehydration synthesis. These are our double sugars. So the three examples would be sucrose. Sucrose is when you have glucose plus fructose, you get sucrose. And also then, because it's a dehydration synthesis reaction there, you'd also get water. Sucrose is common table sugar, and it is the transport form of carbo carbohydrates in plants. So we know that that carbohydrate is made up in the leaves, but it's also needed for other parts of the plant. So when the sugar is transporting throughout the plant, um, it's in that form of sucrose. Maltose is glucose plus glucose yields maltose, plus you get that water molecule. It is found in our intestine as a result of starch breakdown. And then lactose, you get glucose plus galactose. Those are the two monosaccharides that come together to form the disaccharide lactose. And then if, uh, also as a product there, you would have water. Lactose is milk sugar. And you may have heard of lactose intolerance, or if you know somebody that's lactose intolerant, they uh, have trouble breaking down the components of milk sugar, and that could lead to uh, abdominal pain and discomfort. 
And then we have those that are complex carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are storage forms of energy in living things, but they also provide structural support as well, depending on which uh, polysaccharide you are talking about. So polymers and monosaccharides are used for short-term and long-term energy storage. In animals, uh, animals store glucose in the form of glycogen. Plants store glucose as starch. Some are used for structure, such as chitin, which is used in animals and fungi. And cellulose is the structural uh, polysaccharide found in plants. So looking at them, then, the example, starch is the storage form of carbohydrates in plants. Um, often stored in the central vacuole when we, we will look at this a little bit later when we get in the cell structure and function. It's uh, branch chains of glucose. Glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates in animals. It is stored in the liver. And we'll talk about, uh, when we get into uh, further studies of macromolecules, we'll talk about insulin as a hormone, but insulin is the hormone that controls blood sugar uptake and release. And then, of course, we have cellulose. Cellulose is the structural carbohydrate in plants. It is found in the plant cell walls. It is also found in uh, fungal cell walls, so you can't find it in fungi. It is polymers of glucose that is unbranched and fibrous. Often when you have a, a, a diet rich in fiber, you know that it's harder for us to break that down because humans cannot digest that roughage or fiber. So that could also lead to abdominal discomfort there. Um, cellulose is the most common organic compound on Earth because it makes up about 33% of all plant matter. If you look here, here you can see um, glycogen. So glycogen, oh, glycogen, uh, the molecule there with the arrow, if you follow it, you can see how it's branch chains of glucose. And then here you have uh, starch. So here you have starch as an energy and storage carbohydrate. And then down here you can see cellulose. So here you can see cellulose, it's straight change and unbranched. The last polysaccharide that you need to be aware of is a polysaccharide called chitin. It is a polymer of glucose, except glucose now is modified with an amino group, that NHH on it. It is found in the exoskeleton of arthropods, and arthropods are animals with jointed appendages, example, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods which include both millipedes and centipedes. There you can see a millipede in the picture. So these are, uh, this is our, our um, carbohydrate lecture. We will discuss this in class. We'll do some activities related to carbohydrate building using molecular models. And we have now finished our lecture on carbohydrates. Our next lecture will focus on fats, lipids, and proteins.